Today, we will continue on our tutorial on some of the basic concepts in uh, finite difference time domain method or the FTTD method. I'm Shan Hui Fan from Flex Compute. So today in particular, uh, we will talk about uh, the modeling of dispersive material uh, in FTTD method. So material dispersion is quite common. And uh, this shows up when the uh, dielectric permittivity or the dielectric function is a function of frequency. In other words, this shows up when the material responds differently to light at different color or different frequency. One common example of a dispersive material uh, is metal in the optical frequency range. Uh, for example, uh, if we we'll consider uh, gold, uh, it turned out that its dielectric permittivity can be very well described by this Drew model uh, that shows the dependency of the permittivity as a function of frequency. Uh, you can see, for example, that the real part of the permittivity actually varies from being positive to being negative in the wavelength range across the visible uh, frequency spectrum. So uh, it is actually quite interesting to be able to model the dispersion of these materials uh, because they give rise to uh, interesting new physics that does not occur in non-dispersive material. Uh, for example, uh, in the case of gold, uh, this Drew model response uh, give rise to a strong plasmonic response. As a simple illustration of it, uh, what we do is a numerical experiment where we put a dipole source uh, in the uh, immediate interface near the uh, in the immediate vicinity of the interface between gold and vacuum, and uh, we look at the field distribution uh, on the slice as indicated by the uh, gray plan here. When we choose a wavelength of 450 nanometer, uh, here, this line here is the go air interface. Uh, you can see that the field basically radiate into vacuum because the gold uh, essentially behave like a mirror. And that's perhaps what you might expect from your everyday experience of a metal. However, uh, if you lower the frequency or increase the wavelength a little bit to 550 nanometer. Now, in this case, in addition to the radiation into vacuum, the dipole source here also excite a surface mode at the gold air interface that propagates away. Uh, this surface mode is commonly referred to as the surface plasma plariton. And uh, there's in fact a very large literature uh, working out some of the physics and device implications uh, for the excitation uh, of uh, these kind of uh, surface uh, plasma plariton. Here, of course, I'm not going to review the physics associated with the uh, plasmonics. Uh, in fact, the study of these kind of wave has given rise to the field of plasmonics, and I'm not going to review that. But I just want to briefly comment on how you can model these kind of physics uh, within the FTTD method. So uh, up to this point, in all the previous tutorial, when we model a material, we assume the material to be dispersionless, without dispersion. For these material, when you go from the electric field at a particular time to the displacement field, which contain the dipole moment of the material at the same time, what you do is you simply multiply the electric field by the dielectric permittivity. So in the time domain picture, this equation therefore tells you that the displacement field reacts instantaneously to the applied electric field. On the other hand, with dispersion, the physics is somewhat different. I've shown you 
a descri the description of the permittivity as a function of frequency. And this is a frequency description, frequency domain description of dispersion. Since we are doing the simulation in time domain in the FTTD method, uh, it would be useful to consider the corresponding time domain physics. And there, the multiplication of two function in a frequency domain translate into a convolution operation. In other words, the displacement field is related to the electric field as a function of time convolved with a kernel. Now, uh, the physics here, when you look at this convolution operation is that the dispersive material has a memory. Its displacement field depends not just on the electric field at the same time, but also depends on the electric fields in the past. So in the time domain modeling of a dispersive material, one need to be able to account for this memory effect. And there are uh, many ways to do so. Uh, one of the popular method is the uh, so-called complex conjugate pole residual pair method. Uh, in this method, you take the frequency permittivity, uh, frequency dependence of the permittivity, and you express them in this functional form consists of a sum of single order poles. Uh, in these cases, for example, A, M here are the pole that describe some of the resonant frequencies of the material. As an example, for the Jude model that we have previously used to describe gold, you can use two pairs in this uh, method in order to describe uh, the uh, Jude model. Um, Perhaps it would be useful to go a step deeper and to look at the, a bit of the algorithm that's being used once you have described the permittivity in terms of these pole residual pairs. So the way you do it is that for each of these single order pole here, you define an auxiliary current, satisfy a differential equation, that correspond to this particular pole. This differential equation relate the auxiliary current to the applied electric field. Once you define all these auxiliary current, you can then sum all their contribution together to describe the total dielectric response of the material. As you can see from this discussion, the computational cost here increases with the number of poles. So in the example for a Joule model for metal, the Joule model naturally decompose into these kind of pole residual pairs. And then one can use the algorithm as outlined here to describe it. On the other hand, uh, in many practical modeling situation, you were typically given a tabulated data of the permittivity as a function of frequency or wavelengths. For example, uh, you may be interested in modeling the behavior of a silicon slab in the visible and near infrared wavelengths range. And in this case, uh, you can go to standard references and they will tell you how the refracted index vary as a function of wavelengths. And these are not given as a functional form, but rather they are given in tabulated data. In this case, what you would need to do is to use the pole residual pair method that I've described and to fit these tabulated data uh, with this model. So as it turned out, for example, for silicon, if you are interested 
in modeling the behavior of this material in the wavelength range spanning from 400 nanometer to 1.2 micron, uh, which is the wavelength range approximately above the silicon band gap, and so where the silicon is absorbing. Now, in this case, as it turned out, uh, only two pole of this kind of pole resible pair model is sufficient to give a very good modeling. So uh, in tidy 3 d you can find, uh, for example, an utility that allow you to do this fit. And here, the dots here are the uh, data taken from standard reference, usually determined experimentally. And the solid line here is the fit as we determine here. As we mentioned, uh, this fit is important and in fact is necessary in order to use the FTTD method to describe dispersive material. On the other hand, uh, using relatively small number of poles, it is in fact possible in most cases to provide a fairly accurate description of the material dispersion over fairly wide range of frequencies. One of the key advantage of FTTD method being a time domain method is that it allow you to determine the behavior of a structure over a wide range of frequencies or wavelengths in a single simulation. And once you have the capability to describe the dispersive material as we have described above, then it is possible to perform this kind of computation for dispersive structure in a single simulation as well. So here is an illustration where we compute the transmission spectrum of light normally incident upon a silicon slab over the wavelength range from 400 nanometer to 1.2 micron. And we compare the result with a transfer matrix modeling uh, of the same physics, the same transmission using tabulated uh, dielectric function as a function of frequency. And you can see the two agrees very, very well, which indicates that we could indeed in this FTTD simulation to perform broadband simulation of dispersive material in a single simulation. So uh, to briefly summarize, uh, I hope to give you an impression of how dispersive material is being modeled in the FTTD simulation. And thank you for your attention.